I did get a Peloton bike today, though. It showed up today? Yeah, I got showed up today. No cleats or any of that super high-speed stuff yet, but tried it out. Um, a lot different than going to the gym lifting really? weights. I, I call it, they call it a Peloton. I call it the AKA Taint Slayer, man. That thing, <laughs> that thing hurts your butt. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> What's going on, guys? It's Brian and Jack with Some Men's Comics, and this is Last Call. That's right. We're talking about final order cutoff books that are hitting that final order cutoff this coming Monday night. This is the video that lets you guys know what books to get those pre-orders in and guarantee yourself a copy, right? That's right. So when you see those prices spiking after release date and you're like, who was talking about Sonic the Hedgehog's annual incentive? Just remember, it's us right here on the final order cutoff show. Yeah, or Jeff to call incentive variant sort of. But nonetheless, we got some great picks for you tonight and we want to get those orders in, secure those copies, and we're going to start with it right now. We're going to go into Marvel with Ghost Spider number nine. This is a good one to bring up because we talked about here a couple weeks ago that this title was originally going to get canceled from being printed and go to digital only. That is no longer the case, and this looks like to be another great issue. We love this series, right? Right, back from the dead, coming from digital back to print, just in time, right for the return of Gwenum. Now, we've talked about this on our top 10 list. Everybody is really bullish on Spider-Gwen. And Spider-Gwen is really, truly a female form of Spider-Man. And we all know, wherever Spider-Man is, Venom is sure to follow. That has been kind of a trope throughout this character since the creation of Venom. And... I think we've seen that so far with Spider-Gwen, and I expect to see increased reader buzz for this issue. I expect to see increased attention on this issue, um, and I expect to see spikes in the back issues concerning Gwenum. So definitely eyes will be on this issue, and this is one of the points of this show, the last call show and the final order cutoff show. Make sure you guys are aware of these things, because people may not be aware that Gwenum is coming back. Sticking with Marvel, sticking with that Spider-Verse, we get Venom number 27. Last issue just came out. It's got a lot of buzz behind it, especially with Virus. But here we have issue number 27, right? Absolutely. And there's a lot of buzz for this one coming right behind issue 26 as well as issue 25. So this title is right back to the heat that it has. Donnie Cates right now with two congruent series going with Marvel, with Thor and Venom, both on fire, both lighting up. Readers, speculators, collectors, all are on board with this. So a lot to note with this book. We're looking at a one in 100 Ryan Stegman sketch variant, which is surely going to drive sales, as well as the fact that we're going to see a multitude of retailer exclusives for this book. And I think that that's going to drive up some of those high ratio print run numbers. But a lot of times when that happens, those cover A's are great books to look out for. Definitely, Venom is a long-term play. In the short term, these books are going to be readily available. But we talked about retailer exclusive variants. Brian, there's one from our channel sponsor, Frankie's Comics. That's definitely of note, isn't there? Yeah, so there's another great Peach Momoko. Frankie's Comics has been putting out some great Peach Momoko covers. Some of them are internal to that Facebook group, but lately he's been selling them out in the public, and he's been increasing the print run, trying to make it more accessible for the public. This one, he did not give us what the print run was on. He was trying to just get it in the hands of people that wanted it, and it's still sold out. Fantastic cover. It's up on the screen right now. If you didn't secure a copy, make sure you get on Frankie's earlier, so that way next time you get one in hand. Leaving Marvel, moving over to DC, we get one of those big titles been waiting on for quite a while. This was this was advertised like at the beginning of Rebirth, right? We're getting that Batman 3 Jokers. Yeah, this is my most anticipated title to talk about this week. Definitely the book of all of these releases I will be grabbing and reading first because it's for all the reasons you've said, we've been waiting on this story forever. Jeff Johns, when he has these types of stories, always delivers. I'm totally on board for this. The Joker is 
probably the most iconic DC Comics character. Um, I know that I can get some heat for that because people can talk about Batman or they can talk about Superman. Yeah, the heroes are cool, but Joker is moving books right now. Joker spawning other characters like Harley Quinn and Punch Blonde. Um, Joker really is next level of popularity when it comes with like cinema and on animated movies and all of that. So having this Joker story, which is going to define so much of the mystery that has surrounded the Joker. Some people feel some sort of way about it. Some people like the mystery. But me, I'm one of those people like, I need to know the details. So I am on board to see this three Joker story play out and to learn more about all of these individual Jokers and how they kind of came to be uh, one entity and uh, one, a, one thing that just constantly has been the thorn in the side of Bruce Wayne for the last God knows how many years. So Excited for this book. Lots of variant covers. Definitely ones that people are going to be chasing. You're going to see a multitude of store exclusives. You got a 1 in 25 incentive. You got a 1 in 100 incentive. They've got these Jason Fabak uh, premium variants they're going to be coming out with throughout this entire series with, you know, if you pre-order the whole series, you get these special extra ones. So definitely this is a book to be talking to your LCS and seeing what kind of pre-order program they have for it. Because I'm more you- offering up bundles for sure. Yes, big bundles for those uh, uh, Fabok sets. Like I think it's like a 15 book set total. So, you know, that's definitely one of these books where you want to be checking in with your LCS or wherever you buy your comics from online um, and, you know, see what they're offering and see what they can do for you if you really want to go long on this title. Yeah, you mentioned Joker. It's menacing enough to have one Joker, but now you're getting three. <sighs> Boogity bow! Switch it from the big two over to IDW for a second. We get that G.I. Joe, Real American Hero, Snake Eyes Origin. Yeah, Snake Eyes Dead Game from Rob Liefeld is sold out, moving units, going to later printings. And we know that a Snake Eyes solo movie is on the way, as well as a G.I. Joe new movie, new franchise kicking off from All Spark Productions, Hasbro, and Paramount Pictures. And this has people excited. And you can see IDW really reinforcing what is important. So you may say, okay, this is an origin reprint. But you know what? Us savvy speculators know how to look at this and say, this is giving breadcrumbs of where we're going. They want you to know how Snake Eyes came to be. We've heard so much about this upcoming movie being about an origin story, about you know the, uh, the, the clan that he came from and how he became who he is and how he became uh, a G.I. Joe. And we're going to see that play out on the big screen, but a lot of people don't realize this played out in the Marvel Comics series during volume one and issues 26 and 27. Those are really iconic issues. Um, and they're being reprinted here in one book definitely lets me know a couple back issues that we've already been talking about and we're going to be talking about more but definitely lets you know some back issues to be on the lookout for definitely lets you know that snake eyes is going to be prevalent something to pay attention to to me this is a lot like how marvel has done true believers in facsimile editions when they really want to hammer home that you need to be paying attention to a certain character and knowing a certain story We have another great license series is one we talked about on this channel before, especially with FOC, but we're talking about My Little Pony number 89. And what's so important about this one? Well, first off, the first most important thing is we're the only YouTube channel out here in the comics game with the cojones to talk about My Little Pony. But secondly, we're kicking off a brand new story arc and kind of a brand new numbering system. Uh, Still issue number 89, but you're getting the season 10 episode one moniker. That's uh, present throughout the trade dress. Um, Seems to be kind of a new way of uh, marking the series. And if you remember now, Friendship is Magic, which this is the main uh, My Little Pony comic. There's several of them, but this is the main ongoing story. And this, it goes along with the television show um, that kind of sparked the popularity back in the brand. But we talk about IDW books, and the reason why we're highlighting this is there's certain moments and certain things that kind of highlight that this could be a big book. And the thing about this book is, because it's a new arc and it's kind of starting a new system, there's a one in 25 incentive. On an issue number 89, on a title that's kind of been on a downward trajectory and I don't think stores are stocking this heavily, I really wonder the availability of that 125. And we've seen some astronomical prices paid in the past for high ratio uh, My Little Pony comics. 
And this being issue number 89, I know they're trying to sell this as season 10, episode one. Um, but the reality is it's issue number 89. I don't know that stores are going to jump so heavily on board. Uh, and certainly maybe they may order 25 to try out a copy, but stores aren't going to be sitting here with four five, six copies. I just don't think that's something that you're really going to see. And because of that, those books could become short on uh, supply. It is previews gem of the month which is something to note. So they are letting a lot of retailers know that this is out there, but I don't see a lot of like speculators, resellers, flippers, collectors talking about this. And this tends to be kind of one of those taboo topics, but we love to talk about it here on Simpleman's Comics because we don't judge people's fandom. We don't judge what they collect. We don't judge what they buy or what they want to sell. Um, that's why we say, as my man, Brian Wood likes to say, you know, buy what you like. If this is what you like, by all means do it. But Definitely want to highlight profit potential and just bring it up as kind of something that sparked our attention. Yeah. Well, people are going to talk about it. They're just going to talk about it in the comments of this video. But either way, I like that season 10, episode one that you talked about because I think that also helps market to that demographic, that young female demographic yeah. that mostly caters to. I believe there's fans of everyone. That's why you always say, buy what you like. Jack's gone on the record and said he's even p picked up some of these books before because his daughters read it and got him into reading it. But I like the idea that so now when people come in, these younger girls that are catered to that, they see that on the cover, not just My Little Pony number 89. They just feel lost. They, they relate it to the cartoon that they're watching back home and want to pick it up. That's like a great one point. 25 is something that, that's great to highlight as well that people might overlook. Yeah, and there's a one in 10 incentive as well. So that's definitely something else to be on the lookout for. And now we're going to transition to our brand new segment, the Indie Showcase, as presented by Black Cape Comics and BlackCapeComics.com. Black Cape Comics is an amazing LCS and website that caters and specializes in all things indie comics. They produce their own exclusive store variants. They take pre-FOC orders and can be your retail supplier for all of these great FOC picks. So head to BlackCapeComics.com and put your FOC orders in today. Here we're talking about something is killing the children. That's like we're nine issues in, and we're still talking about this at Final Order Cutoff. I remember the first time we talked about Final Order Cutoff, we were killing the comic book market by doing so, but it doesn't seem to have slowed down any because number eight, that one in 25 in center vans sound for crazy. Those later printings of those earlier issues are selling for crazy. So we're talking about number nine that also is going to have a one in 25 variant, right? Yes, absolutely. And this is definitely the title, the book that has birthed this show. So we definitely have to talk about this book. Back issues are going crazy. We're seeing late printings of issues two, three, four, going multiple times over cover price. We're seeing issue number one, cover A, first print hit $100. We're seeing that Frizen book go crazy. But since we're sitting here talking FOC, and you may say, well, what have you done for me lately? We talked just about a month ago about issue number eight and the one in 25 to call variant. We said, with where, the way things are trending, the way that things are looking, this is something to pay attention to. Sure enough, Brian, what are we looking at? Like a $200 back issue? Exactly. I mean, absolutely nuts. And if you put your order in pre-FOC, there's a good chance you could have gotten that for about ratio or maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. Depends on your relationship with your LCS. But we want to alert you again. Now, we don't know the artist right now. We haven't seen the cover art, but we know 1 in 25 incentive is coming. We know the effort that Boom Studios has put into acquiring cover artists, acquiring cover art, continuing to bring these hot incentive virgin covers. I expect no less from this one. And I've said this before, Erica Slaughter, greatest character in independent comics. You put some dope cover art featuring Erica Slaughter, it's sure to sell. So be on the lookout for this one. And don't say somebody didn't warn you. Keeping in the end of showcase and keeping with Boom, we are talking Red Mother number seven. I think Something's Killing Children and Once in Futures kind of overshadowed Red Mother, but this is another one we've talked about on this channel time and time again. Another fantastic story. If you're a fan of horror comics, it's a great one to pick up. But we also have this on this particular episode for a particular cover. Absolutely. We're talking about the one in 10 incentive by, I think, the next big thing in comics, Justine Franny. 
If you're not familiar with Justine Fernley, she did the 1 in 25 incentive for Boom Studios Buffy the Vampire Slayer number 15 that caught everyone's attention, kind of was shooting above ratio. People were like, oh, I didn't see this coming. It had kind of a Harley Quinn look. She's been compared to maybe a more detailed Peach Fomoko, and that's kind of the, the feel and vibe that she gets. And you got to look at how that cover art is taking off in that style. Justine Franny's a new name, a new face. We're seeing a lot of momentum with female cover artists. And right after Boom Studios announced this 20 cover uh, deal with Peach Fomoko that was going to take her, um, kind of keep her busy for the next couple months working on Boom projects, they came right on the heels of that and announced the exact same deal with Justine Franny, which to me really kind of solidifies Franny as kind of a next big thing. And um, I've talked to people at Boom Studios and they have told us that they really, really have that level of faith in her. So I think it's time and I'm not seeing enough people in the secondary market comic community bringing up these names. Quite oftentimes the speculation sites and, uh, you know, influencers and, and people that you follow, they're very reactionary. And that's something that Brian and I have really tried to get ahead of is that, that people wait for something to pop. And a lot of times when that happens, you're chasing and we don't like to chase. If we miss it, we miss it. But that's what we want to do is we want to alert you that this is a cover artist to pay attention to. Um, this is a cover artist who I think is kind of that next big thing. And yeah, it's just a one in 10 incentive. And Red Mother, you're right, Brian, has definitely been eclipsed by those other major tiger titles. But I have mentioned my favorite current ongoing horror book to read. Um, maybe my favorite read from Boom Studios. I don't know. It's getting tough. So many good books. But definitely pay attention to Justine Franny. And and definitely be on the lookout for future work from Justine Franny and Simple and Comics. Here we have a book from Image Comics, and we're talking about a new series in Big Girls number one. This comes from Jason Howard. I've known him from his artwork, especially on that Image series he did before, that Cemetery Beach. I enjoyed that one. This one they're describing is what John Wick meets Godzilla. Oh yeah, but by way of HBO's girls, because we're talking about you know men are turning to monsters, uh, and because of this, there there needs to be a defender, and we're talking about a three hundred foot uh, woman giant. That's a monster killer stopping these evil men. Um, you mentioned Jason Howard and some of his past work. I know him from his work with Warren Ellis on Trees, a book that I'm a big fan of. So definitely one to check out. Jason Howard is uh, another one who's kind of like carved a little niche in Image Comics, uh, made a name for himself, definitely climbing up the ladder of indie comics. So, you know, we love indie comics here. Brand new image number one, always something you have to highlight. And again, I want to reiterate, if you're looking to put in those FOC orders and you don't have an LCS locally or you don't have a place to put in your pre-orders, make sure you head to blackkidcomics.com. Check out all the books available for FOC as well as the amazing store exclusive variants that they have put together for some of the greatest indie titles of the last year. And it's funny because you mentioned Warren Ellis and Jason Howard on Trees. Guess who the writer of Cemetery Beach was as well? Warren Ellis? Yes. We're giving you our picks and what we always do towards the end of the show is we also talk about those additional printings. We just have one to talk about this week though, right? Yeah. Strange Academy 2. Second print. That's it. That's all we got. But it's a good one. It is. It's a good one. And it's one people are definitely paying attention to. A lot of second appearances. Um, a lot of people like this book. So again, let us know in the comments, what are you guys looking forward to ordering for FOC? We talked about some great boom books, but we also talked about on this channel recently how we have our very own first store exclusive that we've teamed up with Boom with, right? Yes, absolutely. We teamed up with Boom Studios and the 616 Comics and the 616comics.com to bring Seven Secrets number one, the very first creator-owned title from the big-time heavyweight writer himself, Tom Taylor. That's the man behind Deceased, behind Suicide Squad, that brought you all new Wolverine. And now he's bringing his talents to Boom Studios in the creator-owned world. Indie Comics is better for it. And we are bringing you limited to 500 copies, virgin cover art from Jung Young Yoon, who you may be familiar with, some of those high ratio Marvel variants, as well as DC cover Bs. The book is available for sale right now on simplemanscomics.com, as well as the 616comics.com. Yes, great cover. Highlights both the protagonist and the antagonist. Available on SimplemansComics.com, like you said, and the 616Comics.com. Make sure you guys get your copies. We are selling through them. So we thank everyone that has purchased one so far. 
With that being said, this is Brian and Jack with Superman's Comics. See you guys in the next video.